Seriously? Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Seriously? English for Brazilians. Every time I have to make my eye, my brow go up. Seriously? My name's Josh Cashill. And this lesson, I have to say, in addition to all of my other lessons, this one is one of the most important in terms of pronunciation. And we're going to look at specifically how to pronounce correctly 100% of the time the past tense of regular verbs. And there, you have one thing going for you, Brazilians, and congratulations. About 33% of the time you get it right every time. So you have that to go, you have that going for you. You have something positive and we're just going to work off that and make sure you get it the other 66% of the time. All right? Again, we're looking at the pronunciation of the past tense of regular verbs and I'm going to show you why Brazilians make mistakes, make mistakes when they pronounce these verb tenses. It's pretty simple. And the solution is actually pretty simple too. You just have to be really aware and attentive to the rules, which are simple. And then you have to make sure you stop yourself. Put on your, your, your blocker there, your mental blocker, and correct yourself before you say it. So I'm going to tell you all the rules and all the pitfalls to avoid so you can get it right. Okay? Let's get straight to it. Now, before I give you the rules about how you pronounce the past tense uh, of regular verbs, I'm, I'm going to ramble a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things that affect the pronunciation of these verb tenses. Why do we do it? Why do we pronounce it this way? And one of the most important things to consider is that Communication, when we're speaking, it's about sounds. It's about the sounds that come out of our mouth and how we use our lips, our tongue, our vocal cords to produce these sounds. And that is where we're going to be able to understand why the sounds are pronounced, why the, the, the past tenses are pronounced in certain ways and it's according to sounds. What distracts us and what interferes in our pronunciation is the written language, written English. Now, English, the, the written language, is just a convention. It's an approximation of the sounds that we produce with our mouth, with our voice. What do I mean by that? If you look at the, the, the English alphabet, I'm not sure how many letters there are in the Portuguese alphabet, but in, there may be a few fewer than in the English. The English there are, that's right, 26 letters, and I'm not going to sing you the song, the alphabet song. So there are 26 different letters, but how many sounds do we produce to form the, the English language? Well, there are about 44 different sounds. But we've only got 26 letters to represent those sounds, those 44, 45, 43 different sounds. So you can see that the written language does not kind of encompass all the sounds that you can create. So when we're speaking English from the perspective of a Brazilian Portuguese speaker or a Portuguese Portuguese speaker or a Mozambican Portuguese speaker, um, the written language will interfere with pronunciation because the Portuguese pronunciation is in such a way that it will cause interference. Now, I know that may not make sense right this second, but it will, trust me. So, moving on, I want to talk about sounds. And to do that, I want to show you a little trick. It's interesting, and you may have never seen this before. So what I want you to do, gently, put your hand on your throat, right here 
on your Adam's apple. Gently, right there. You can see I'm holding on right here. I'm putting my fingers on either side of my trachea. And I can, that's where my vocal cords are, my quadrus vocage. And what I want you to do, I want you to make this sound with me. I want you to put your lips together and say, mmm. Hold here and go, mmm. You should feel in your whole face, and especially here, a vibration. Your, your voice has a vibration to it. And that's one of the things that's important when we're talking about the pronunciation of the past tense. Now, when we say this sound, mm, our vocal cords are vibrating rapidly, brrr, creating this vibration. And let's use uh, another sound. We did the mm sound. How about g, g as in garota, g, g. Our vocal cords, again, are contracting and vibrating rrr, to make the g sound, all right? That sound is called a voiced sound. It has a voice, it has a vibration. Now I want you to do the same thing, but instead of saying mmm, I want you to say the sound for snake, for example. You'll notice that your vocal cords do not vibrate. <gasps> what a surprise! Why not? Because in order to make the sound, the air has to come out of your trachea without interference, without blockage. So your vocal cords are static and the air just comes out. So let's say And how about we make the as in kiosk, kiosk, the k, k, k sound. Again, there's no vibration, almost as if there is no voice. These sounds are called voiceless. And one, I think, we have the voiced and the voiceless sounds. With that, we will know how to make, how to pronounce the past tense of regular verbs. This goes not only for past tense, but also for adjectives that are derived from the past participle of the verb, of regular verbs, which are pronounced the exact same way as the past simple. So we have adjectives, we have verbs in the past simple, and we have the passive voice pronunciation of regular verbs, which also use the past participle. So we have all these different elements, verb tenses and, and, and conjugations, that we have to be aware of when we're pronouncing correctly. So now, I've gone on really long and I haven't shown you anything tangibly that you can see uh, to practice with. So I'm going to stop now and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Now let's remember voiced and voiceless sounds. And we're going to go on to the next part of this uh, lesson, okay? Okay. As you can see here, we have a regular verb, the verb to laugh. Hier. Hier. <laughs> that really wasn't that funny at all. <laughs> But I do laugh at myself from time to time, more often than not. So we have this regular verb. How do we make, how do we form, in written form, how do we form the past tense of this regular verb? Well, we do this. We simply add ED. The letters ED. But this ending, this ED ending, is actually pronounced in three, count them, one, two, three different ways, depending on what? The sound. The final sound of the verb. How does the verb end sonorically? What is the sound? And it will depend, as we saw before, on voiced, the ones that vibrate, 
or the voiceless sounds. So let's look at our first verb, our first type of verb, and these, this ending, this ed ending, will have the sound of t. The verb will end with the sound t in the past tense. Okay? Let me erase all this and I'll show you. Okay. So now we have the verb to laugh. Let's look at this very closely. Laugh. Again, the written form of it is don't even worry about it. Don't think about it. Put it out of your mind. I want the sound. We pronounce this word correctly and we have laugh. That's the final sound, laugh. And what I want you to do is put your hand here on your throat, around your trachea, gently, please, and say the sound. It is voiceless. It has no vibration to it. So when we add the ED ending, that ED will continue with the voiceless sound t. So what happens is we have, oops, let me undo that. We have a sound, a word that sounds more like this. Laugh, t, laughed. Now let's look at the infinitive of the verb because I want to show you something that's very important for Brazilian, Brazilians. The verb is laugh. There's one syllable, laugh. When you say the verb in the past tense, there should continue to be only one syllable, laughed, laughed. What happens with Brazilians? Because of how the Portuguese is pronounced when you read it, you might say, if we're looking here, laughed, laughed. And that is where the mistake, the interference from Portuguese comes from. What you want to do is you want to carry the sound of the ED straight on to the T. Laughed. Do it very slowly at first. Don't rush. Don't go too quickly because I want your mouth and your lips and everything, and your vocal cords especially, to adapt to that quick change. Laugh. Okay? That's one way of saying it. And when we're looking at this voiceless pronunciation of t, there are several sounds that will continue with the t ending. And those are all voiceless sounds. And they are as follows. Let me erase this. I'm going to Look at my notes here, all right? We have the sound. I'm going to write the verbs, okay? To drop. We have to wreck. To wreck is, I'm not sure uh, in Portuguese, uh, destruir, maybe, okay? Ooh, to froth. To laugh, as we saw. I'm running out of room. To force. To push. And I'm going to erase this here. And uh, to watch. To watch, olhar, assistir, to drop, deixar cair, to wreck, destruir, to froth salivar na boca <laughs> to laugh ha, 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 here to force forçar to push empurrar now let's look at the final sounds of these verbs and this is what we're talking about this is what we need to pay attention to regardless of the spelling listen to the sound ch watch ch, ch, ch. voice less drop drop no vibration. Wreck. No vibration. Froth. 
That sound in itself is difficult for Brazilians. Froth. Again, no sound. Laugh. No vibration. Force. No vibration. And push. Push. No vibration. All of the ED endings. They have a t sound. And again, let's go down the list, okay? This is going to take a while, but I want you to see what's going on. First of all, watch. How many syllables? One syllable. Watch. Now, it's voiceless ending sound, and that will carry on. Watched. One syllable. Watched. Not watched. Watched, one syllable. Then we have to drop, one syllable. Drop, voiceless p sound. Dropped, one syllable in the past tense. Dropped. Wreck, wreck, voiceless, one syllable. Wreck, in the past tense, wrecked, wrecked. Again, one syllable. To froth, to froth at the mouth. One syllable, froth. The past tense, frothed. Frothed. That's a tough one. Frothed. One syllable. Laugh. We've already seen it. Laughed. One syllable. Force. One syllable. Forced. One syllable. Push. Pushed. All of these one syllable regular verbs in the past continue with one syllable and end with a t sound, okay? These are the voiceless ed endings of regular verbs that end with the ed sound of t. Oh my gosh, it's super complicated, but it will get easier. You'll see what's gonna happen, okay? Okay, I made this easier <laughs> for you. I've already created the list. These are the voiced sounds. I'm going to write this here, voice sounds. I want to show you something about this word voiced. Look at that. This is an adjective. You, the verb is to voice. How does that verb end? What sound does it end with? S voice. There's the show, the voice. <laughs> but let's look here. Voice ends with a s sound. So the ed ending will have a t sound voiced, and it's one syllable, voice, voiced, all right? So, we are talking about voiced verbs with the helicopter in the background. Give me just a sec. But we're talking about voiced, vibrating sounds, and that sound, if we have the voiceless t, what do you think the voiced version of t is? D. It's the same exact location and structure of the mouth, except you're just vibrating your vocal cords. D. So let's go down this list and look at what sounds are used with voiced ed and how we pronounce those past tenses. So we have the verb grab. Grab. B -b 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 -ba -ba -ba. It vibrates, grabbed, grabbed. Again, you have the verb that has one syllable, grab. The past tense, one syllable, grabbed. Not grabbed, grabbed. Next one, and grab is pegar, así. To brag, g, 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 same thing, voiced. Bragged, bragged. One syllable, one syllable. To bathe. That's a tough sound. Bathe. Again, it vibrates. Bathed. He was bathed in blood. Ooh. That is the passive voice. To love. Love me tender. Love me long. To love. I loved that song. To raise. You have, again, you have the spelling. It ends with an E, but the sound is Z. It's a vibrating voiced z raised. 
raised on the radio. Great song. To charge j j j j j the sound j like j j j Josh, my name begins with this sound, Josh. This verb ends with charge, charged. That's a little bit difficult, charged. But it continues to be one syllable. To seem, he seemed quite strange. To burn, kemach, burned. Oops, let me fix that, burned. She got burned. To bang, pa pa pa, panelas panelasu. To bang on your pots and pans. They banged. Protesters banged on their pots and pans. To care, care bears. To care for. I was cared for by my by a pack of wolves. So this is the pronunciation of voiced. Endings of regular verbs, we have a voiced ending continuing on to a voiced d sound, all right? And it's important to remember that the verbs maintain the number of syllables in the past tense. Now, in this next session, we're going to see where Brazilians get it right. Yes! If we recap for a second, do you remember when the voiceless endings of verbs are pronounced with a t sound. For example, like, t, like, t. That's a t sound. And the voiced verbs, past tense, is pronounced with a d sound. Seemed, seemed. But I have a question, a conundrum for you. What happens when the verb ends with one of these sounds? What do you do? Oh my gosh, heads exploding. Well, in this most difficult of situations, this is where the Brazilians get it right. And they get it right because they're getting it wrong. <laughs> and I'm going to show you. For example, let's look at the verb want. Want. That verb ends with t, want. So how do we pronounce the ed ending? Do you know what? If you were a Brazilian and you read this uh, as if it were a Portuguese word, you would say wanted. <laughs> Congratulations, you pronounced it correctly. The verb is want, it ends with a t sound. So in order to pronounce it correctly, we add an extra syllable, the id, wanted. And we say that extra syllable only in this situation. So let's look at a, um, a verb that ends with a d. Oops, that should be white. End. It, it, it ends with the, the, the voiced, the vibrating d sound. How do we pronounce the ending there, the ed ending? Ended. We add an extra syllable. Want, wanted. End, ended. Let's see another verb here. What sound does that verb end with? Edit. It ends with a t sound. So with the way we pronounce it is by adding a syllable. Edited edited. And Brazilians get it right every single time because they just read it like it's a Portuguese word. Congratulations for them. And one more with the D sound. Ah. Need. Need. Needed. Needed. I needed that. I needed to get this off of my chest. So when you are reading or when you're speaking, especially when you're speaking, I think it might be easier to get this right because you're not influenced directly by the written word. But when you're reading a text, and that's what we're going to do in this next uh, section here, we're going to read it. I'm going to put a text for you to read with all kinds of different past tenses, passive voices, and adjectives with the, the, these different endings. And I want you to try it, okay? 
Okay. Here is our text. Here is your text to read. So what I want you to do, I want you to pause this lesson right now, and I want you to go through reading this text, locating all of the instances where you might need to pronounce the past tense of a regular verb. It may be t, d, or id ending. All right? Take some time to do that, and then I'm going to be right back, and then we're going to read through it, and I'm going to show you where each case is. Okay? Pause. Did you pause? <laughs> no. Pause. Seriously. Thank you. Okay. So, we're going to go through this line by line, and we're going to, I want you to, to, to see if you got it right, okay? You did. Some of the times, I'm sure you did. <laughs> I think the first, first moment here, you did. So, let's take a look, okay? So, a leaf got a sixth grader suspended for a year because it looks like marijuana. All right, that's the first, that's the headline of this article. This comes from uh, a, a newspaper. Uh, where was it? In Pennsylvania? Somewhere? I can't remember. We'll discover. Oh, uh, Virginia. Roanoke, Virginia. I lived in Virginia once. This article shows you how crazy Americans are. But let's go back on task. A leaf got a sixth grader suspended. There's our first instance. The verb is to suspend. It ends with a d sound. So we have to add an extra syllable to it. Suspended. Suspend. That's a two-syllable word. Suspended. Three syllables, okay? That's our first instant. Because it looked like marijuana. Here we have the t looked like marijuana. Next paragraph. A Virginia sixth grader was arrested and suspended from middle school for a year because of a leaf found in his backpack that an assistant principal thought was marijuana, according to the Roanoke Times. It was a leaf that looked like marijuana. So, a Virginia sixth grader was arrested. The verb is arrest. The past tense, arrested. This is the passive voice. That's actually the past participle of the verb to arrest. So the sixth grader was arrested. And what? Suspended. Again, we see the same uh, word here. Suspended. The verb is to suspend. Suspended. We have that extra syllable. Those three times, all of you Brazilians got it correct. Good job. So now, it gets a little bit trickier. So the sixth grader was arrested and suspended from middle school for a year because of a leaf found in his backpack that an assistant principal thought was marijuana, according to the Roanoke Times. No other instances there. So let's go to the next one. The unidentified 11-year-old, a student in a gifted and talented program at Bedford Middle School until the leaf was found in September, was forced to enroll in an alternative education program for troubled students and take classes at home. The county sheriff charged him with juvenile marijuana possession. Crazy! So, the first instance. The unidentified. What's the verb? Identify. That's the verb, identify. This is actually an adjective. Un identified, and that's the past participle, but the pronunciation is still the same. It ends with a fi, identify, it's a voiced sound, so it's going to end with a d ending. I unidentified 11-year-old, a student in a gifted, this is also an adjective, gift. The, 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 it's actually the whole word is an adjective, gifted. The noun gifts ends with a t sound, so we have to add an extra syllable. Gifted and talented. We have this, uh, the noun talent. It ends with a t sound. To make it into an adjective, we add the extra id syllable. T 
talented helicopter. Okay, so the unidentified 11-year-old, a student in a gifted and talented program at Bedford Middle School until the leaf was found in September was forced. Forced. Here is the passive tense. The verb is force. It's a voiceless sound. So we're going to make it end with a t. Forced to enroll in an alternative education program for troubled. Now here, this is the verb, this is an adjective. What kind of students? Troubled students. The verb is to trouble. That's voiced. Troubled students and take classes at home. The county sheriff charged. Here we have again this is the verb. This is the past tense of the verb to charge, which ends with the j, 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 charged. We're going to carry on with the d ending. Charged him with juvenile marijuana possession. Last paragraph. It turned out that the leaf, whatever it was, was definitely not marijuana. It tested negative three times. Another helicopter, the perils of recording outside. One sec. Okay. So, one more time. It turned out that the leaf, whatever it was, was definitely not marijuana. It tested negative three times. The sheriff's office dropped the marijuana charges, and the boy was allowed to return to school, albeit a different one, beginning Monday. How generous of them. He was allowed to turn, return to school. Ugh, crazy sheriff. So, let's look out. Look here. It turned. That's the verb turn. It ends with a voiced n. We continue it, the, the past tense with a d. Turned out that the leaf, whatever it was, was definitely not marijuana. It tested negative. Test. It ends with a t sound, so we have to add that extra syllable. Tested negative three times. The sheriff's office dropped. This is the past tense of the verb to drop. We saw it in the lesson. Dropped. It ends with a p, p, p voiceless t or a p, p sound, so we continue it with a t. Dropped. The marijuana charges, and the boy was allowed. The verb, this is the passive voice. It's actually the past participle of the verb to allow. Woo, 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 woo. Voiced. Carry on with the voice D. Was allowed. Helicopter. And the boy was allowed to return to school, albeit a different one, beginning Monday. So these are the different cases of all the different kinds of verbs we saw. Verbs ending in voiced uh, ed, verbs ending in voiceless, and verbs ending in the the id ending. Okay, so we have all the different types here. I'm going to read it one more time, more naturally, just to give you a feel for what it might sound like. Okay, a leaf got a sixth grader suspended for a year because it looked like marijuana. A Virginia sixth grader was arrested and suspended from middle school for a year because of a leaf found in his backpack that an assistant principal thought was marijuana, according to the Roanoke Times. The unidentified 11-year-old, a student in a gifted and talented program at Bedford Middle School until the leaf was found in September, was forced to enroll in an alternative education program for troubled students and take classes at home. The county sheriff charged him with juvenile marijuana possession. It turned out that the leaf, whatever it was, was definitely not marijuana. It tested negative three times. The sheriff's office dropped the marijuana charges and the boy was allowed to return to school, albeit a different one, beginning Monday. Okay, so we see everything, how it all comes together. I know I've rambled on and on and on, um, but this is a good example of all the different pronunciations that we have, how Brazilians make the mistake, what you need to do to avoid making the mistake, and how you can improve your pronunciation. And pronunciation is important. At the end of the day, it's not 
the most essential thing on the planet, but it helps. It gives you um, a better, not a native like, it, it sounds more natural. When you're able to, to make the past tense sound natural, you sound natural, you are more fluent and better understood. Communication improves, there are fewer mistakes, fewer misunderstandings. Everyone is happy, especially your boss. So I'm going to call this an end to this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Like it, love it if you want to, hate it if you need to. Uh, check out my blog, the rest of the, the blog, because there's going to be some extra information. Uh, send me a, a, a comment if you like, and I will see you in the next lesson. Cheers. Fury.